In this episode, I'm going to be answering a question from somebody taking my Building Safety Anchors course. We're going to be talking about the process of change, including doubts and self-judgments, evaluations. I think this episode can help you get some clarity on your own process of getting unstuck so that you can continue to focus on getting unstuck. My name is Justin Sinceri. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist that thinks the world needs a new paradigm for mental health. Welcome to Stuck Not Broken. So this podcast is not therapy, nor is it intended to be therapy. And also Building Safety Anchors, my course is not therapy, nor is it intended to be a replacement for therapy. So I'm going to read the entire um, question I got from this Building Safety Anchors participant, and then I'm going to break it down and answer or share my thoughts in, in chunks. So the person says, hi there, Justin, this is connected to safety words. I'm in my safe environment. There's just me. I'm revisiting the safety words tonight and feel slightly different to when I first explored the safety words. The words loved, compassion, validated, understood, empathy, and affection stand out today, but each of those words in my head is followed with self. Today, I only feel those words because I am here for myself. My question is, is this okay or am I closing myself off? It feels okay to me, I think. Thanks for any thoughts coming my way. If you're not in building safety anchors, you probably have no idea what she's talking about. So let's first off, let's kind of talk about what is this person talking about? So safety is not just the literal environment, like the place that you're actually in. It's not just the people around you. That is not what we mean when we say safety. I'm actually referring to biological pathways. When we say safety, through the lens of the polyvagal theory, that's really what we're talking about is biological path. We're talking about biology. So building safety anchors has this list of words, of safety words that I put together that I want the participants to reference throughout the course, not just once, not just at the end, but throughout the course, we reference these words to check in about their experiences, to get some conscious awareness of anything new developing within them through the building safety anchors course. Biology has, and it's, it's really easy to miss it, but there is this felt sense. There's this present moment experience that we have with our biology. It's super easy to miss. And until we actually slow down and notice these, uh, we, we, well, we just might keep missing it. It helps then to consciously slow down and look at this list of words and say, have I felt this recently or this week or whatever it is, whatever the pace is that you're on. Uh, So, for example, the words that they use were loved, compassion, validated, understood, empathy, and affection. Those are, that's just a small sampling of the words that I put together in this list. But you may never, like, ask yourself, do I feel validated? Do I feel compassion or empathy? Do I feel affection? Like, how often do you ask yourself that? So, when you're prompted to ask yourself that, it, it gives you a moment to look and say, hey, well, have I actually felt validated today or this week? Uh, what led me to those feelings and how can I reproduce that? Like that is a prompt to like build on it, to build feelings of safety or to build safety anchors that lead to feelings of safety. It's, you know, it's hard to like just dive into something without really knowing. I don't want to say the end result, but without knowing at least like checkpoints or milestones. If you don't know what safety is and like taking a course like this, is ideal in in a sense because it teaches you what it is and how to look out for it. But you may miss it when it's there. So you kind of need something to prompt you to recognize safety when it's actually there. And this is something with therapists, hopefully that we're doing with our clients in therapy is, is noticing over the past week or whatever, whatever length of time it is noticing there were moments that we felt safe or we felt connected or things were different in some way. But you're going to have to be prompted to look at that. So it's not an end point because the work I don't think is ever done. Uh, we're always hopefully changing and growing and challenging ourselves. So it's not an end point, but it's more like maybe like a checkpoint. You know, just checking with yourself. Did I feel these things or no? Which of these words from the safety list did I feel? And how is that different than maybe from the past? And everybody's checkpoints are different. So it's not, even checkpoint is not, is not a great word because everybody's experience of building up or getting unstuck 
is different than the next person's. So it's not exactly a checkpoint either. I just don't have a better word for it. And that's why I made building safety anchors so open-ended because there really isn't one path that works for everybody. So maybe the safety words are more like a marker or at least like maybe an illustration of safety developing. You get the idea. Change is a process. Getting unstuck, making change in your life is absolutely a process. It's not a one-time thing. It's not like we just shake and tremble and the trauma is released or our nervous system is reset or something like that. It's, that's not the way it works. I, I, I have not seen it that way. I have not experienced it that way. It's a process. We are constantly, I think, building our capacity to feel safe and to stay in our safety state, our biology. In episode 135, uh, Safety Cue Dependency, uh, I talked about this, about the process of building safety versus applying safety as medicine. Safety and change, getting unstuck, it's not just an issue of changing your thoughts. Really, you got to change your biological state first. If you're aware of polyvagal theory, you know story follows state. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, ch- go to uh, justinlmft.com. I have a course called Polyvagal 101 that is uh, a must. And if you're not in a place where you can buy something like that, I have it for free as well. Episode 101 through 109. It's a lot longer and there's some ads mixed in there and whatnot. So Polyvagal 101 on the website has it really condensed and all the essentials are right there of polyvagal theory, including the concept of story fell state. Getting unstuck is not just an issue of changing behavior. Again, it's like our behavior stems from the potential of our biology. So if our biology is in a potential or primed to connect with others, then our behavior is going to follow as well. But if our biology is more prepped for running away, then our behavior is going to kind of match that. It's going to come from that. Change is also, uh, there's like somatic pieces to it. It involves the body, and that's something that we neglect very often is the role of the body. And I don't mean just how we feel. I'm also referring to uh, these biological mechanisms like the vagal break, which is the influence of the safe and social state on the heart. It keeps it beating at a calmer pace. Again, Paul Vagal 101, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, on justinlmft.com. We have to build the capacity to feel safe. And that's really what I'm talking about is the strength of the vagal break, the ability ability of our social engagement system to tolerate higher and higher levels of distress. Change and getting unstuck, it requires patience. It's not a one-time thing. It's not one and done. Um, And there's absolutely going to be obstacles. And you kind of have to have patience to get through those obstacles. You have to be able to see that there is some hope. There is uh, improvement happening, not just that will happen, but is happening in little pieces, little doses at a time. There absolutely are going to be obstacles though in this process of getting unstuck. You're going to have your own self-doubt. You're going to have judgment. You're going to evaluate your progress, which is not inherently a bad thing, but we can easily become evaluative in a very negative way toward ourselves. That's where judgment and blame, that's where those kind of come into play. But these are also just kind of part of the process of making change in anyone's life. And it's not necessarily, well, it's not a failure. Doubting yourself and judging yourself, it's not a failure, it's not a deal, but it is absolutely a part of the process. The issue is just, are you getting sucked into it or not? Or are you noticing it and using it to your advantage? I'm going to talk about that in a minute, actually. There's really not like a right way to make change There is, I have my course that kind of lays everything out and building safety anchors, but it's pretty open-ended. There is a flow that I recommend, but your experience of that flow is going to be different than the next person's. And even if it's not my course, even if it's just some other course or whatever your avenue for getting unstuck is, there really is no right way though. Like maybe your thing is yoga and that movement uh, the, the elements of movement are helpful for you, but also the co-regulative pieces of being around other people that are safe and encouraging and supportive. Maybe that's you know fundamental to your process of change. I, I can't tell you that's wrong. I can't tell you that my course is wrong for anybody or right or yoga is right or whatever it is. It's different. Every single one of us is going to go through something different as far as what helps us. There's a lot of similarities, of course, but there's no, I don't think one 
correct technique, one correct path, one correct way of thinking. I, I think it looks different for each of us. I think it's the stories that pop into our minds, the experience of it, the feelings of it, the intensities of making change and getting unstuck, it's different for every single one of us. And that's really cool. So it takes some patience, yeah. But it also takes curiosity for you to be interested and curious about what change feels like for you, what safety feels like for you, what meeting your goals looks like and feels like. You kind of have to be curious about that and be patient and notice all the little bumps and bruises along the way or what seems like bumps and bruises, but really are just kind of the process of change. And again, we can use these to our advantage. Judgment and doubt are completely normal paces of making change or of getting unstuck uh, for wherever you're at in life. Judgment, doubt, totally a part of it. Very, very normal. And the reason for that is as we climb the polyvagal ladder, we will drop back down into more of a defensive state because feeling safe could be extremely uncomfortable for many people. If they're not, if you're not used to it, and all of a sudden you start feeling trust and vulnerability, or you're making eye contact with like a therapist and you're, you notice it, uh, once you become aware of it, or even if you're not aware of it, just feeling these things can be really uncomfortable and send you right back down your polyvagal ladder into more of a defensive state. And so as you drop down, back down the polyvagal ladder, Along with that, story follows state, your thoughts change along with your state, and you're going to have judgments, and you're going to have doubt, you're going to evaluate yourself, you're going to evaluate the situation. And again, none of these are inherently wrong, it's just part of the process. The issue is, are you getting sucked into it or not? Like, it might be difficult for many people just to start to like think more positively, which again, story follows state, so... As you access more safety, you're going to have more positivity in your thinking. You're going to have more positivity in your behavior or more uh, social connectedness, more empathy in your feelings. You're going to have more generally, I'll say, positive feelings. It's going to, and that's going to be a much different experience. Trust and vulnerability, those are weird if you're not used to them. Those are very uncomfortable and they can send you right back down the ladder. So you kind of have to get used to these. And, and when I say get used to them, I don't mean, mean like, you force yourself to make eye contact with someone and get used to it. I mean that you continually put yourselves in situations where you feel more and more safety or calmness or connection or just being present in your body in the present moment. And the more you do so mindfully, you can start to build the strength of your safety state, your social engagement system. Basically what I'm describing is your window of tolerance or your, your vagal break the ability of the social engagement system to keep the heartbeat at a calmer pace, even when things get difficult. Along with this ladder climbing and then descending as things get challenging, it's very possible to have evaluations or judgmental thoughts. So is this okay? Am I doing this right? Is this going to work? All these things that we're wondering and doubting and evaluating. Very possible these things pop up and very, very normal. And it probably comes from some discomfort, some more defensive feelings from accessing, possibly from accessing your own safety state and then going right back down the ladder. So if you can notice the thoughts, that's awesome. I think it's exactly where you need to be. It's fantastic. Then notice the feeling that comes along with it because it's not just a thought. Our thoughts follow our state, but in between our polyvagal state and our conscious awareness of our thoughts might be some feelings. Uh, so what I would encourage you to do is if you notice those thoughts pop up, what feeling is coming along with it? So if you're wondering, am I doing this right? Or is this okay to feel this way? Is this okay to focus on myself? If you're noticing those thoughts, what's the feeling that's kind of underneath that? And the next level would be then to like, what, what does it feel like to have that feeling? Meaning, if your thought is, uh, I, I think I'm doing this wrong the feeling might be nervousness, it might be concern, it might be worry, it might be anxiety. So what does it feel like to be nervous? What does it feel like to be unsure? What does it feel like to have anxiety? Those feelings live in your body somewhere. And those, that's what I mean when I say those somatic sensations. So if you can, that would be even like a second or third step, which is noticing the thoughts, awesome. Noticing the feeling that comes along with it, fantastic. 
But then the next level is what are those somatic pieces? What does it feel like in your body to have those emotions? That's what I mean. And like give yourself a, a top-down normalization here or validation. Yes, this is difficult. So validate that. But also normalize. You may have like decades worth of conditioning on a very biological level. I work with adults at nighttime. I work with kids in the, in the daytime. But at nighttime, I'm working with adults that have literally decades worth of conditioning, of being stuck in a traumatized state, of existing in certain types of family dynamics that uh, condition someone to be in more of a defensive state. So coming out of that and it feeling okay is a challenge. So normalize that that's okay that's completely normal and especially based on someone's context and how long they have been in that context it may take a while to come out of that and to build the strength of our bagel breaks or to build the strength of our safety state that's that's okay this would be like asking someone who doesn't run to run a mile under i don't know what the normal time for a mile is but let's say to run it under a really fast time, whatever that be, fill in the blank, I have no idea. So like that's kind of not realistic for some for someone to to get an above aver- or below average time on a mile when they haven't practiced running a mile, if they're not runners, right? You have to put the work in first. You have to build your ability to do so. And then once you do that, you keep doing it in order to improve upon your mile time. And then once you do that, then you maintain it. So you kind of still have to keep going to, to maintain the same mile time, I suppose. You kind of have to, or maybe to be better than average for your age and weight and whatever. You kind of have to keep maintaining that progress by continuing to practice running that mile. So it's the same thing for our safety state. I don't expect, I don't expect anyone who hasn't practiced being in a safety state to all of a sudden feel it and to be able to maintain it. That's not a realistic expectation. So recognizing these feelings is a really good thing. I mean, maybe just recognizing the thoughts that pop in your mind first, but also recognizing the feelings that come along with it, the somatic sensations. That's a really, really good thing. That's, that's a, actually a really good sign because it shows that there's more safety in your system. So if you're present enough to be able to notice, like, am I doing this right? If you can notice that thought and not just like dwell on how terrible you are at something. Oh, I suck so much. I'm going to be stuck my whole life. I can, I can never change. That's a hell of a lot different than noticing. Am I doing this right? Noticing the thought and then noticing the feeling that comes along with it. That's a lot different. You're not getting sucked into it. And now you're actually using it to your advantage. You're, you're using that thought. You're recognizing it and then using it to your advantage to look a little bit deeper in, to do that stuck not work of it being curious and exploring that inner world that you have. So if you can recognize the thought that already shows that you have some more safety in your system, and that is a really good sign. Uh, In therapy, a lot of times what my clients will tell me is we'll have a session the next week, just checking about how progress is going, what was different this past week, what's going well, but also what needs to work, be worked on. And a lot of times they'll say, well, I noticed that you know, my presenting problem, like my anger level or my numbness, it was still there, but it was different. I was able to recognize it and be with it. Or I was able, it just didn't get spiral out of control. I was able to be more present in the moment or in my body. So the problem's not 100% fixed, but I was able to maintain my conscious awareness of the present moment, of that moment, feel those feelings, and then handle it. Hopefully, oftentimes, they, they will handle it a different way. It just, at least it just doesn't spiral out of control like it used to. So that's not perfect. The work's not done yet, but that shows there's more safety in the system. There's more capacity to be with their feelings and to not get sucked into those like defensive kind of feelings. That's it though, fellow stuck knot. Thank you so much for listening. I do hope that you benefited from this. If you are interested in building safety anchors or polyvagal 101, head on over to justinlmft.com and you can find out more or just you can hit me up, email me at justinlmft at gmail.com if you have questions about either of these courses. Otherwise, bye.
This podcast is not therapy, not intended to be therapy or be a replacement for therapy. Nothing in this creates or indicates a therapeutic relationship. Please consult with your therapist or seek for one in your area if you're experiencing mental health symptoms. Nothing in this podcast should be construed to be specific life advice. It is for educational and entertainment purposes only. More resources are available in the description of this episode and in the footer of justinlmft.com.